So I want to talk a little bit about codependency. This gets a lot of airtime. People talk about being codependent a lot now in the same way that a couple of years ago, everybody was a narcissist. <laughs> you know, yeah. like if you met the yeah. sort of diagnosis for one, and of course, everybody's a narcissist to some degree, right? There's a sliding scale. There's shades of gray. Let's talk a little bit about what codependency is. So like signs and symptoms of a codependent, maybe that comes back to your own upbringing. And then I would like to contrast that with what a secure attachment uh, might look like in a relationship. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, codependency in my world is where I help you, but you don't help me. And so they're often unequal, non-mutual, non-reciprocal relationships where the term originally came from a co-alcoholic in, in the work of Alcoholics Anonymous because they, they found that the person who is trying to get their alcoholic partner sober had a lot of issues themselves and they were actually part of the problem, which is so interesting because the codependent has so much of their attention on their partner who's got issues or who is withdrawing, retreating, avoidant, has an addiction, is depressed, anxious, has some mental health diagnosis. The codependent is often the helper, the fixer, the rescuer, the nurse, the doctor. The martyr. The martyr. Yeah. And that often, if we rewind the tapes in that person's life, they usually grew up in a family where mom was sick or dad was an alcoholic. or, And the way they got love and connection was to try to be helpful. And they tracked the family kind of relational dynamics and, and did their best to mitigate harm and increase connection. And then that became a habit. And so, of course, they in their adult life, they attract a partner who's got an issue of some kind or many issues, and they want to fix it. And so it becomes this very strange, non-mutual relationship, again, where, hey, I'll, I'll repair with you. I'll take responsibility for my part in a fight, but you won't do the same for me. And then people want like, what is wrong with my, me and my relationship? And it's like, well, and they often have it that the other person needs to change, but I always tell them, well, no, you have something to change. And that must be more common in women. I think so. I think that's fair because women are so much more relationally trained to, to like be sensitive to relationship dynamics when they're little, whereas boys are taught to prioritize themselves and not the relationship when they're growing up. So I think mm -hmm. that's probably true. Yeah. And so that's codependency. Mm -hmm. So let's contrast that now with what a secure attachment style might look like. Yeah. So if you have no relationship issues at all, which is very few, if, in, if not <laughs> nobody, you probably have some insecure pockets in yourself and relationally speaking with other people, most of us grew up in families where we couldn't really express ourselves fully or we would have gotten punished or neglected or ignored or something. There would have been some kind of consequence. So we learned strategies to keep the connection going. And often it comes at the expense of our true, who we really are inside. So we end up in adult relationships where we feel like we can't be ourselves. That's an insecure relationship dynamic where we don't repair conflicts. We just kind of wait three days and hope it goes away. And we have a glass of wine and watch Netflix and, and we feel better four or five days later. That's an insecure attachment uh, bond between two adults. Securely attached adults behave in ways that are mutually beneficial. They collaborate well through the difficulties. They embrace challenges. They make mistakes like the rest of us, but they repair those mistakes consistently and repeatedly and in a timely fashion. This leads to just the feeling in the home. When you come home, you actually feel like your nervous system can be let down and you're relaxed. And both people feel that way. You're giving and receiving an exchange that feels fair, it feels mutually beneficial, and gen generally it feels good. And again, that's not withstanding there's crunchiness and conflict and issues, but they're both bought into working through those issues and getting back to zero or back to a good place. No matter what. No matter what consistently and repeatedly. All right, let's let's lean into that. We talked a little bit about the importance of the and this is something that I think you're most well known for, which is this conflict repair cycle. And it seems to be that it's not the absence of conflict that makes a robust, you know, long-term relationship thrive, but it's the repair piece after conflict occurs. So I think that there's a couple of things here. First, we have to all recognize that there is going to be conflict. And then it's what we do afterwards in that reparative, reparative process that I think is what you, you know, where a lot of your work tends to focus on. So let's, let's open up that topic and talk a little bit about why it's so important 
for us, A, to accept that there is going to be conflict. I mean, we touched upon that with sort of some of the, you know, the Disney fairy tale rom-com yeah. silliness that we're all, especially women are, are, are pandered to around. You're just going to have this perfect prince and he's going to sweep you off your feet and it was happily ever after. So there's that piece. And then when there is conflict, how do we be, I, I mean, maybe even during the conflict, how are we good fighters? How do we not fight dirty? And then what does the reparative process look like afterwards? Yeah. Awesome. Let me back it up by talking about just quickly parent-child attachment dynamics, because that's where the term came from is mothers and infants really and in raising kids in a good way. Yeah. It's if you think about a mother raising a baby, an infant, she can't be perfect. It's impossible. She's going to miss moments when the baby needs something and she's unavailable. She's on her phone or she's triggered or whatever happens. And I get this can happen with a dad too, but let's just kind of be be honest that most of the caregiving is still still happening by through women. And so the mother's ability to repair all the mistakes or as Ed Tronic calls them, mismatches in the connection between baby and parent, the more securely attached that baby is going to become to the mother. And the more it's going to feel like it's safe and it can express who it is and it will get its needs met. And if that's consistent over time, again, that's what leads to the secure attachment is not the absence of those mistakes. It's how quickly and effectively mom repairs them. And the baby has a part in that too, but but mostly it's the adult's responsibility. So in a, if we zoom into adults in our relationships, the strength of an adult partnership and a bond over many years is not, as you said, not built in being nice and avoiding the hard conversations. It's embracing all the hard stuff that comes up between us and within us and without of us and our friends and our families and working through it and getting like having the respect and dignity to believe in each other and believe in ourselves that we can work through something hard, having the communication skills. And so repair becomes this vital skill. People ask me, well, what should I do during conflict to make it better? And I'm always like, you know what? We all kind of go offline a little bit in conflict. We go into the back part of our brain. We're reactive. We say the stupid thing. It's That's less important because we have so little control over ourselves. I'm not justifying abusive behavior, okay? But I'm just saying it's hard to really get a handle on your reactivity. What's more important, the most important thing is how quickly you can recover from your reactivity, get that there's an impact on the other person, take responsibility for it and clean up that mess. That's what builds secure attachment over time is the repair. 